All right, welcome back. We are going to do a read aloud again. We are on chapter 18 of our book, A Long Pitch Home, written by Natalie Diaz Lorenzi. So let's get going. Chapter 18. Miss Salinas, our music teacher, is very excited about something she calls the holiday sing-along. Right before winter break, every grade will perform holiday songs from different parts of the world for the parents. I wonder which song we will sing from Pakistan. She asks, how many of us will be celebrating Christmas next month? And almost everyone raises a hand. Jordan doesn't raise hers. Okay, Miss Selena says, how many of you will celebrate Hanukkah? Five kids raise their hands. Josh calls out, we celebrate both. Right, Miss Selena makes Miss Salinas smiles like she's grateful he brought that up. How many of you celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah? Only two kids' hands go up, including Josh's. You two are in luck because this year, this year Hanukkah begins on Christmas Day. She seems very excited about this fact. Hanukkah will run from December 21st to January 1st. I'm sorry, December 25th to January 1st. Sorry guys. Now I understand. We'll be singing songs about December holidays. I raise my hand. In Pakistan, our 25 December holiday is Kuid e Azam Day. Miss Salinas looks surprised. I think she is impressed because I guessed the holiday we will be, be we will sing about. What holiday is that? Miss Salinas looks interested, but maybe this is not one of the December holidays on her list. It is the birthday of Kiad e Azam Muhammad Ali Jannah, I remind her. Miss Salinas's eyebrows come together, and now I know for sure she doesn't know <clears throat> about Kiad Kiad e Azam Muhammad Ali Jannah. How do I explain? I remember Jalal pointing to the old men on American dollar bills. One of them is the father of America, but I cannot remember which one. Now everyone is looking at me, so I have to say something. He helped make Pakistan when Pakistan left India. Oh, Miss Salinas tilts her head. She sounds I'm sorry, he sounds like a very important person. And Pakistan used to be part of India? How interesting. I stare at Miss Salinas, then glance around. None of my classmates have any idea what I'm talking about. I guess since I don't know who is the father of America, then maybe it's fair that Americans don't know the father of Pakistan. Or that Pakistan and India used to be one British colony. But still... Miss Salinas breaks the silence. That leads right into our next holiday. Who celebrates Diwali? The Festival of Lights. That holiday isn't in December. Akash and his family celebrated, celebrated, it, celebrated it about a month ago, near Halloween time. Miss Salinas holds up her finger like she's ready to count all the kids who celebrate Diwali. No one raises a hand. Okay. Miss Salinas looks around. How about Ramadan, then? I raise my hand. I am the only one. Wonderful, Bilal. We'll be singing a Ramadan song, too. A Ramadan song? In December? This year, Ramadan was during the summer. It moves back about 11 days every year. It'll be old. I'm sorry, I'll be old before Ramadan ever falls in December. Okay, then. Miss Salinas's eyes rest on Jordan. Does anyone celebrate a holiday not on our list? She noticed that Jordan didn't raise her hand for anything. Jordan folds her arms and looks at her shoes. No? Okay, then. Our program is set. Let's begin, shall we? Miss Salinas plays recordings of all four songs. Most of the kids sing along to the Christmas and Hanukkah songs one about a little town somewhere, and the other about a clay thing called a dreidel. No one sings along to the Diwali song, and the Ramadan song? I've never heard of it. 
it's an Ara it's in Arabic, so I don't understand most of it. Later, when I get off the school bus, I have to jog to catch up with Jordan. Wait! She looks over her shoulder and slows. Hey, Bilal. I fall into step beside her. You didn't raise your hand in music class. She picks up her pace, and I have to take long strides to keep up with her. We celebrate Christmas. I nod, but I do not understand. Why didn't she raise her hand then? It's just, my mom and I celebrate it when my dad comes home. Oh, I, I wish I could say more, although I don't have all the English words I need. I try anyway. We left my father one day before Eid ul Fitr, the last day of Ramadan. Jordan looks confused. Ramadan lasts one month, and when it ends, Eid begins. Eid is a big party with your family, your friends. But this year, we left Pakistan before we could celebrate Eid, and my father stayed behind. That stinks. Yes, so much. But you got to spend the Ramadan month with your dad, right? I think of the three days he was missing, but decide not to tell that part to Jordan. Most of the month, yes. So that's good. At least you were with him for a whole holiday month. I shrug. That is not the most fun part. You are supposed to fast. Only eat and drink when the sun is down. Jordan's eyes open wide. Wow, you must get hungry. That is the point. To understand how people feel who do not have enough to eat. She nods, and I think she's impressed. I don't know if I could do that, she says. Neither do I, actually. Jordan looks surprised. I have never done the fast before. I have always been too young. This year, I want to, but Ami, my mother, said I should wait until next year. You lucked out. I shrug. It's hard to explain that fasting is not a burden. It is something grown-ups do and something that I want to do. Jordan kicks a pine cone, sending it flying into the street. My mom and I open presents from our relatives, Uncle Matt and Aunt Carol and my little cousins. My grandparents send gifts too, but I save one present for my mom and she saves one for me, and we have one present for my dad. When he gets home, we put up a fake tree and we open our presents. That's sweet. Jordan's faraway smile makes it seem like she's watching a movie of her family's Christmas in whatever month they celebrate. We walk in silence all the way to her house, stopping at her front yard. Jordan asks, any news about when your dad is coming? I wish I knew. Not yet. Jordan nods and shifts her backpack from one shoulder to the other. I bet you'll hear something soon. As she walks to the door, I think about the idea of having Eid with my father when my father comes back. We could have the same foods. My mother, auntie, and Hida could get henna designs on their hands. We could go to the mosque and thank Allah for bringing my father back. I wouldn't even care if, we, if there were any gifts. Having Baba back would be enough. The day of the holiday sing-along has arrived, and you'd think Miss Salinas is prepping us all for a Bollywood production. She flutters around at our rehearsal, making sure we're all in our places, up on the gym stage. The six classes of fifth grade graders stand on four tiered rows of risers, with the front row on the wooden stage floor. The gym has been transformed into a winter wonderland. Miss Salinas calls it. Strings of tiny white lights drape from the center of the ceiling to the basketball hoops on the four sides of the gym. One entire wall is covered with the snowflakes we made. The silver glitter glue glued to the snowflakes makes them look like they are sparkling in the sun. From here, you'd never know my ugly snowflake is up there with all of the other beautiful ones. My classmates started making them yesterday while I was in ESL class. I was late getting back to Mrs. Wu's room because Mr. Jacobs had asked me to do a reading test. He thinks I'm doing such a great job in English that maybe I won't even need ESL classes much longer. I couldn't wait to tell Mrs. Wu. 
but by the time I got back to class, bits of paper were everywhere, and kids scurried around the room cleaning up. Jordan showed me how to make a hurried paper snowflake, which reminded me of how reminded me of Dado's lace scarves. But my attempt at paper snow didn't look like at all like lace. It looked more like a tattered tissue you'd find on the floor at the end of the school day. <laughs> Looking now at the snowflakes up on the gym wall, I can only hope mine is way at the top where no one can read my name. Maybe I should have written in Urdu letters. Bilal? I blink. Mrs. Salinas is looking at me. Ah! No! I lost my page. Okay, there we go. Whew. That was quicker than I thought it would be. <laughs> I said, let's run through the Ramadan song first. She jabs her thumb over her shoulder at the instruments set up along the front of the stage. The kids standing in the rows below me move aside so I can step down and join the other instrument players. I find the xylophone I am supposed to play and sit next to the kid with the silver triangle. We rehearse the song, and I am glad to say I remember almost all of the notes on the xylophone. I just wish we weren't right up front. When rehearsal is over, Miss Salinas claps her hand. Hello, she says to me. You will be a smashing success. Then in a louder voice, I'll see you all back here at 1.45. Remember, your parents will be attending, so best behavior at all times. Pre Perform like professionals. As we walk back to the classroom, I'm surprised to see Jordan at the head of the line. She wasn't on the bus this morning, and I didn't see her come in late. Maybe she arrived during my xylophone playing. When we get back to class, Mrs. Wu has a magnet activity set up for us where we have to build a circuit. She calls it electromagnetic. After she gives the directions, our group divides up the task. I'm unrolling my copper wire when Jordan leans over her desk. A wide grin stretched across her face. Below, guess what? Before she can say any more, Mrs. Wu kneels next to Jordan's desk. I'm so pleased your father is back for a visit. <gasps> Thank you, Mrs. Wu. Jordan gushes. Mrs. Wu pats her shoulder and moves to the next group. I stop my copper wire, half unrolled, and stare at Jordan. Your father? He is back? She nods so fast, her freckles blur. For five days. He surprised us this morning. He won't be here on Christmas Day, but it's better than nothing. That is great, I say. And it is, but it makes me miss Baba even more. Until this moment, I didn't realize that Jordan missing her father somehow helped me. It made me feel like I'm not the only one. But now, Jordan's father is here, and Baba is not. Later, we file into the gym for the sing-along. I look around for my mother. I think we'll never spot her in this crowd. But then Uncle stands and waves both hands over his head. I smile and send a wave back. He goes, hey! <laughs> Almost everyone is here. Auntie and Uncle, my mother, and Humza. Jalal is supposed to come straight here after the high school dismissal bell, but I don't know if he'll make it in time. I try to picture Baba standing there alongside Ami, but I just can't. I know he is taller than Ami, but how much taller? How does he stand? How does he walk? We fifth graders sit and watch all the other grades perform first. When the first graders take the stage, Hida looks like she's right where she's born to be. She curtsies to me, and I smile back. Hira ends up having a small solo part, her high, clear voice floating through the gym. I look back at my mother, expecting to see her wiping away a tear, but instead she's holding up the iPad, filming the concert. Then it's our turn to sing, and we take our places on the risers. Jordan stands two rows below me, and while I can't tell exactly where she's looking, it's somewhere off to the right. Which, Whichever one her dad is, I wonder if he'd rather be watching Jordan play baseball instead of listening to us all sing. 
We sing our four songs, and I only make a few mistakes on the xylophone during the Ramadan song. With all the voices singing behind me, I hope no one noticed. After the performance, we return to our classrooms, where our families all meet us for dismissal. I'm packing my backpack when my, fi my family comes into my classroom, including Jalal. He made it after all. Hira is already with them, her coat on and her backpack slung over her shoulder. Bilal! Hira lets go of Auntie's hand and rushes over to me as I pull my coat from my cubby. Did you see me? Did you hear my solo? I smile. You sounded great, Hira. She beams. So did you, Bilal. Will you teach me to play that? What is that instrument called? A xylophone. I have to admit, it's nice to know a word in English that Hira hasn't learned yet. My mother is near the door, signing me out, and I head over to say goodbye to Mrs. Wu. Happy holidays, Bilal. Thank you, Mrs. Wu. Happy holidays to you, too. Jordan calls Mrs. Wu's name, and I turn. Even if he weren't standing in between Jordan and her mom, I'd know he's her father. He's got the same freckles and dark hair, although it's so short, I can't tell if it's curly or not. I have, I've seen Jordan smile before, but never this big. Her smile matches her dad's. People say I look like Baba, but I could never really see it. If he were here in my classroom, I wonder if people would say things like, Baba, this must be your father, or wow, you two look so much alike. Jordan introduces her dad to Mrs. Wu, and I turn away. I join my family outside in the hallway, and we head for the car. One day, Baba will come to my American school, and I will introduce him to Mrs. Wu, and to Jordan, and to Mr. Jacobs, too. One day. All right, my friends. That is our chapter for today. We will read chapters 19 and 20 tomorrow, and we'll find out what happens, see if the Lal's dad makes his way back or to America. He hasn't been here yet or to America yet. So let's see what happens tomorrow. Alrighty. Um, make sure you are doing your language arts and your math and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.